expectations and reality. I'm going to introduce Jacopo, and then the stage is all his. Jacopo Rome has been paid for coding since 1996, which led him to create the IT companies, uh, three IT companies. He destroyed two, and the third was a success. He fell in love with lean and agile methods in 2003 and has advocated for better software development and knowledge work, knowledge work practices since then. Before and after getting hired by eBay in 2012 as a freelance, he worked for many European firms, including Amazon, Siemens, FAO, and Lavaza, and InnoLeaps. He currently helps companies develop their products in conditions of uncertainty, either in the startup scene or corporate venture building. Can I have a round for Jacopo? Jacopo, the stage is all yours. Ciao, everybody. How are you? Is it going fine? How many got drunk yesterday at the party? <laughs> Okay, cool. Uh, so this is going to be a workshop. This is going to be, uh, so the difference to me, the difference between a lecture and a workshop is that in, the wor in a lecture, I would produce the content and you listen. In a workshop, you produce the content and you listen. That's amazing. I mean, <laughs> basically, I do nothing. And, um, and this is the first time I delivered this workshop. I chose Craft 2023 as the first chance to deliver this, this workshop, so I'm assuming everything will be fine, but there will be glitches, probably a, a link will be wrong, but nothing that we cannot fix. Uh, we have 140 minutes, and they are probably going to be a little bit more than needed, okay? So we have a buffer, so the rhythm will be quite relaxed unless I tell you to rush, <laughs> okay? And so, um, let's start with an introduction. introduction. So, this was the first disclaimer. Second disclaimer, we're going to have a little bit of gambling in this room today. So, if you are somehow bounded to, for religious or ethical reasons not to play gambling, I mean, you can just listen, okay? And uh, the second, the third, actually, the third disclaimer is that, okay, the title um, and the abstract of this workshop is all about having things go, go better than planned. There is no silver bullet. We're going to explore reality of software development from a given perspective, and we will discuss how we can use that perspective to improve our lives as developers, project managers, UX designers, knowledge workers in general. Um, I hope, so my best expectation for today is that you get out of this tent with a, a, few, think, a few more thinking tools that might help, might help you in your work starting on Monday, okay? So I want to tweak your thinking about project management in a very concrete way, okay? This is my, this is my very humble goal for today. Now, the due grade credits. I will be talking about, uh, I mean, the first time I met, uh, we will talk about ergodicity. Ergodicity is a concept that I met when I was at the university, I was studying there, but the main source of knowledge for me about this is Nassim Taleb, that you may have heard about. But also I have to acknowledge the work made by Taylor Pearson and Luca Dell'Anna, a fellow Italian uh, ergodicity fan. So, now, this, this is what I had to do, and now it comes what I want to do. Now, we're going to play a game. The rules of the game are this. You should form teams made by four to six people. Six is, is optimal, but if you, basically, if you are somehow um, a, a closer guild, you can, you, can, you can play in four people, okay? Don't go for groups that are smaller than four people because otherwise some statistical uh, patterns I'm relying on could be disrupted. Um, 
It doesn't matter if you know each other. It doesn't matter if you work together. Basically, I just need four to six people sitting together with a laptop, with a laptop. Uh, you will get a link to Google Sheet. I will give you the time to form the groups after a while. Um, you will get a link to Google Sheet. I will give you this link. The Google Sheet is read-only. You have to copy the Google Sheet on your own Google Drive uh, folder, and you can use that in writing mode, OK? So basically, we are using a prototyping uh, strategy. Um, then, as I told you, you will open this uh, one laptop per group. One laptop per group is enough. Being this conference Craft 2023, I'm assuming most of you have a laptop in their backpacks, but you don't need to to have a backpack. Uh, sorry, a laptop for each of the person in in the in the, in the team. One of you will be the one who bets. So you will be betting on the performance of your team, of your team members, OK? Who's going to be the most performing one? Who's going to yield the most in the time of the workshop, of the game? And each team will work on a linear production process. So basically, that means that there will be a person A delivering to B, and the person B delivering to C, and so on. It's going to be very easy. And Individual delivery, though, will be simulated by a die roll. How many of you are into uh, role-playing games and board games? Don't be shy. OK, fine. So in the Google Sheet that I will provide, there is a random number generator that you can use if you really can resist the charm of rolling a die. Mm, I got plenty here. Um, basically, I told you, A delivers to B, B delivers to C, and so on. So what is the delivery? A delivery is just a, a, a roll of a die, and so every, every person delivers one to six tasks done to B, and so on. Is it clear so far? Is it clear? OK, cool. Individual delivery is bounded by individual inventory. This is the hardest part. So let's say. I produce six items, OK? And I give the next person, uh, sorry. I produce five items, and I give, what's your name? Gab Gabor. Gabor gets five items, OK? Then Gabor roll a three. So Gabor will give Ricardo three items. Then you got two left, right? You can use those two items for the following round, OK? So basically, if you don't use all your inventory, some inventory stays. Is it clear? Obviously, if you only have an inventory of four items and you roll a five, you only deliver four, OK? Cool. One of you will not play, choose wisely, and will bet on who is going to be the best performer in the team, as I told you already. Only yield counts. So this is, uh, we, we will not be, uh, you cannot bet on the roll of a die, but you have to bet on how much you deliver, OK? Is it clear? So please, form the groups so that we can start. I will give you two minutes. Yeah. No, you, you have to roll sequentially, because your, your yield influences the chance to yield for the next people. OK, let me get the remote control. OK. Voila. Voila. How many do you have? Four, three, okay, five. five. One more. <laughs> it's plenty. OK, cool. So everything is ready to start. Um, now, this is the QR code or the short link for the Google Sheet that you have to copy on your Google Drive, if you have one. The, the URL is ergodicity-workshop.
So I'm going to show you what you're, gonna, what you're going to find in the, in the Google Sheet. Oops. This. Ah, this is over. Okay. So, you see, there is a, a section of the sheet for the roles, okay? There will be 10 turns, 10 rounds, and you go for the full chain 10 times, okay? So you put name one, name two, name three, name four, name five, and name six. If you are less than six, you leave the last columns empty, okay? Okay. Now, uh, okay, then we will start playing, and at the first round, we have name one, rolling the die and noting down what's the number of things that they produce. Then we have name two rolling the die again. And then name three, name four, name five, name six. And then this ends the round one. And then you start all over. You only write in this section of the sheet and we will have the results showing up here according to the results of the, roll die, the dice roll. Is it clear? Quite usable, I hope. This is the first test with real users. So we can start. So I will be back in 10 minutes or so. Yeah, questions, obviously. You are, okay, the ones that, the, the ones that are betting, they can just nominate who's going to perform best, assuming on your opinion of those people, your prejudice, and Uh, uh, yeah, 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 why not? Yes. Otherwise, it's too boring. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, what is your question? Uh, at the beginning. At the beginning, but you can, you can check, you can... You, okay, let's do like this. This is a good question. Hey, again, listen to me. Listen to me. Wait, 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 wait. Listen to me. You can bet at the beginning, and you can adjust your bet at the fifth round. It's like poker. So you see, you open the game, and then you choose whether to raise or not, okay? So it's, it's something like it's similar. So once you have bought a bit of, of information after four rounds, at the fifth round, you can decide to change your bet. But that's the only, the last chance for the better, okay? Wait. The first round, the, the, as you see, the, 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 um, the, the first round, the first player has inventory zero. But obviously, the second, this, uh, there, there will be some inventory left after the first round. I, I didn't, I, sorry, sorry, I didn't hear. So, sorry? Yeah, ah, okay, yes. Oh, sure. And there was another question? No, no, I think that the person can play. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's unrelated. It's something like, let's call it the project manager. Yeah, I will show you, I, I will give you an example, and then I will show you the, the URL. So. Let's, let's say there is Jacopo, Riccardo, Mino, Tino, Pino, Rino. Okay? Cool. So, round one. Jacopo uh, rolls a die, uh, and this is one. Then Riccardo rolls a two. Then uh, Mino rolls a four. Tino rolls a five. Pino rolls a two, okay? So this is what, this is, this, is, this is like that. And you will see that Jacopo has delivered one, Riccardo rolled two, but can only deliver one, and so on, okay? But you just have to roll the dice uh, above. That's all, it's very easy. Now, the URL is this one, wait. What do you bet? When? At the beginning, before beginning the game, and again, before the fifth round starts again. 
Uh, this is on yours. I mean, otherwise it's illegal if it gets recorded. <laughs> Everything is clear? Okay, cool. Clear? Okay. Are you, are you fine with the rules? Is it clear now? Okay, cool. Okay, do you need help? Do you need help? Okay. Do you need help? Yeah? Yeah? You're, you're betting on who's going to be the best performer among the, among the, the, the people. Ten. At the end of 10 rolls, yes. The project is 10 iterations. So, now all the groups have done. So, please answer these few simple questions and then we will get into your actual experience. So, if you throw, this is a good sign. Usually when people get, as an Italian, I know that when people start talking, it's a good sign. This, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not joking. I mean, I really, I really enjoy when people Wait, 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 just wait a second. So, uh, uh, let me give you a sequence of questions, okay? So, if I throw a die, if I roll a die 100 times, what is the average value that I get? 3.5, almost, <laughs> okay? 3.5, yeah, actually. So, you sum up one, two, and threes, and fours, and fives, and sixes, and blah, blah, blah. The average is one. Uh, sorry, 3.5. Okay, cool. Now, if I ask, what's your name? Artyom. Well, if I ask Artyom to roll a die 100 times, sum up the results, what is the average value that he gets? Uh, the average? 3.5. Okay, so the ensemble average of 100 rolls is the same average of a time average of 100 rolls. Do you agree? This is the definition of an ergodic process. Wait. This is just the premise. Now, you, we have modeled your productivity as an individual with the roll of a die, right? So we should expect, we should expect each of you's individual, each of each individual's productivity to be on average 3.5, right? Cool. What was so? What was your average roll of die for each of you? There is a there is a there is a line showing this. So, for example, at this table we got Artem Artyom 3.9, Kolos 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 Kolos. 4.1, David, 3.7, okay? How much he is here? It's 4.9, very good. Uh, 3.7, 3.7, 3.3, 3.8. They are all around 3.5. Obviously, there is a standard deviation, but I mean, these are a few, just a few. Otherwise, we, we, we couldn't roll dice all day long, I mean. But what about this? 3.1. 3.9, 2.7, it's an outlier, 3.6. Okay, cool. So, yeah. So, each of you had the chance to produce the same yield. So, we are not bringing into the game things like skill. We're not bringing into the games things like politics. You're not being supported by anyone. You're not being... Uh, uh, unsupported by anyone, there is no manager mobbing you, okay? So basically, each of you was free to produce a yield each round, which with a, with a, a variance, because sometimes you have a cold, sometimes you're very happy and productive. By the way, each of you. Now, what about, so if we have six people, four people working with the same average, we should expect the process to be on average producing the same amount of stuff, right? And that's what I would think. And that means that it, it, at the end of the round, if I get 3.5 items, after 10 rounds, I should get on average 35 items done. How many in the end? 
It's the yellow box. 16. How many? 21. How many? It's the yellow. 12. Very bad. Very bad. How much? How many? 18. So you got the lowest record. I mean, do you think it's their fault? And especially, they are the worst. I need, I need this character every time, okay? So don't, don't get too, too personal. But, but still, still, all of you ended up being way below the expected average. Now, this is, these are the facts, okay? We discussed average of uh, die rolls. We have discussed uh, stuff that are just facts. Also, the numbers that you collected. These, these are not made up numbers by me, okay? Now, let's discuss what happened in reality, because everything we discussed so far is just the theory of numbers. We will get back to that. But what happened in reality? Why are these numbers so low as a starting point? Thank you. Have you heard him? So basically, he's saying people downstream is, are going to be affected by people upstream, which might be so. And we all agree with this, right? But we could even bring in the consideration that okay, fine, but that doesn't mean that it has always uh, it always has to, uh, it always have to go in a bad way. I mean, it could also mean that if someone produces more, then it's going to be more favorable for the people downstream. But apparently, this, are, this doesn't happen. Why? These are very simple questions. There is no trick. There is no uh, try to get you in, uh, in, in error. If it was first. And yeah, I mean, at least. This is what is emerging from the facts. Don't forget, this is one of the main takeaways for today. In theory, there should be no difference between practice and theory, but in practice, there is. Okay, so facts over rule, always rule, okay? So we can have theories, project management theories, models, agiles, waterfalls, scrum, whatever, blah, 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 blah. But still, what happens is what happens. And we have to find an explanation for that. OK, cool. So uh, Michael, Michael's explanation was somehow uh, a resolution for, for us to understand what's happening. So basically, we have an asymmetry. So basically, we cannot exploit overproductivity of our colleague, but we, are, we get damaged by the underproductivity of our colleagues. And this asymmetry brings us back to the concept of non-ergodic processes. Let me explain you what ergodicity is, and then we will get back to uh, a shared discussion. Let me give you a few, a few slides. Questions so far? OK, cool. Now, let's suppose I propose to play a Russian roulette, OK? I mean. Russian roulette with a six bullet uh, gun. So, uh, what's your name? Anu? Anu. Okay? Anu, if I, ask, if I propose to play Russian roulette, do you accept? Really? No, oh, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> We might have the record for the least risk aversion. Okay, so basically, I give you a gun. 
I give you a gun with, with one bullet in six, in, in, a, in, a, in a six, um, uh, what's the name, by the way, the, but what the, so the container of the bullets. And so you got, like, if, if you get one, you're, you're dead. Oh, okay, so, okay, nice. Okay, so. <laughs> Which is fine, but you're not on Google search, don't forget. Okay, okay cool. This is a legitimate answer. Especially, you might consider, okay, but what's the price? If, if, it's, if the price is like um, um, eternal youth, it might be worth trying. I mean, it's just only 17% of chance fa of failing to, to, to live forever. Whatever. But, but, what if I propose Anu to play... Hey, would you join us on Thursday night to play Russian Roulette every week? She has no doubt, all right? Okay, fine. That's because Russian roulette is a non-ergodic process. A non-ergodic process is a process in which, the, in the time series, ruin is an option, okay? So, ironically enough, if we, uh, in the Chaos Report by Standish Group, do, have you ever read this report? It's freely available in PDF. It's a research they performed since 1995 about the health of software development industry. In the 2015 edition, <laughs> the chances for a, soft, for a corporate software development project to fail with a magnitude big enough to threaten the survival of the company itself was 17% which is exactly one out of six. But still, in this case, we don't call it a Russian roulette, we call it project, software project management. If I die today, please remember me for this, okay? <laughs> okay, now, actually, when I, when I started considering this stuff, uh, I started getting into the risk management thing, and I owe a lot to Nassim Taleb, which I had the chance to meet a few years ago, because I started wondering, hey, what makes software development and knowledge work in general fragile? And with fragile, I mean exposed to ruin. And so, uh, some consideration um, emerged. So, first, ergodicity has, now I can give you a definition, finally. So, let me read it. So, um, a way to identify an ergodic situation is to ask, do I get the same result if I look at one individual's trajectory across time? Or two, I look at a bunch of individuals' trajectories at a single point in time. If the answer is, is yes, I get the same value, the process is ergodic. Otherwise, it's not. For example, if I go uh, investing money, and every time I invest all my money in only one investment, that process is not a might This might be the best investment available in the portfolio, but if it goes wrong, I lose all the money, and I have no money left for the rest of my life or for the following investments, okay? Do you get the point? Otherwise, if I throw a coin 100 times, Actually, I get the same average result. I get the same, uh, from the mathematical point of view, I get the same results as throwing 100 coins and then counting the head and the tails, okay? This is the definition of, ergodic, of, of, of er ergodicity, when the ensemble average is the same as the time average, okay? Okay, fine. Now, now that we know what ergodicity is and we had a, a brief experience about ergodicity, we have to wonder, we have to ask ourselves, is software development ergodic as we know it today? I saw a few nod no's. Cool. So this is a time that you discuss why. In groups, you can have an open discussion. I will give you like 10 minutes to discuss why software development is non-ergodic or why it is if you think it is, okay? Please. Time flies. 
when you have fun. <laughs> Raise your hand if you can hear me and keep it raised. Raise your hand if you can hear me and keep it raised. Keep it raised. It always works. Thank so it was, it was just raise your hand. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, you can lower your hands. Now, uh, let's see what emerged. First, uh, is the main opinion that software development processes are ergodic or non-ergodic? Non-ergodic, non-ergodic, okay, let's check why. Uh, shout out, whoever wants to speak can speak. Raise your hand so that we can have a cue. There are always, so dependencies reduce the ergodicity, okay. But I mean, let's spot the difference right now. So we provided the example of the all in investment, we provided the example of very <laughs> little risk covers people. I mean, I really loved it. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> yes, I play Russian roulette. Oh, I'm amazed. <laughs> I'm impressed. So, but still, we can say that dependencies are is necessarily are necessarily enough when they go wrong in some way to destroy the project. So this is the outcome is not that binary, right? So there are. This is, there, there are not just two categories of project done, so like successful and destroyed. There are many things in between, right? Okay. Then, dependencies are there as one of the root causes. Any other thing that have been discussed? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So it's like smoking one cigarette is ergodic probably. The problem is that, so if you, if you get 100, so 1 million people smoking a cigarette, probably it's very healthy. Very healthy. I mean, so, so. So you get the point. <laughs> yeah, but otherwise, if you smoke 1 million cigarettes and you're alone, <clears throat> smoking is non ergodic process. But there are, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. especially the addiction is there. <laughs> but also, there is, we, we perceive in reality, actually, that this is not that binary, okay? My grandmother was smoking like two packets every day when she was 83, and she started when she was 12. Can you imagine? Basically, she had lungs like sun sweet. So it was like, so it was like a little bit, okay, fine. So... Now, other considerations, so thanks for the accumulation argument. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise it can be like a, a loss of success, some, a reduction of success. Yeah, that's what I'm getting into. So basically, for a process not to be ergodic, it doesn't have to be necessarily a 100% ruined chance. If we have dependencies and we have a process in which the average in time is different than the average of the ensemble, then that's not ergodic. For example, Developing the first user story in a, pro in a software project. You get 100 projects and you start developing the first user story. Has this the same chance of success than, del than delivering like 100 user stories in a single project? I never saw a project failing at the first delivery. I've always saw software deliveries <laughs> failed after a while. And I, and I heard mentioning, at least at this, in this, at this table, maybe it came up also in these other tables, I heard about something like relational stuff, emotional stuff, which I want to detach myself from a, a common, a too common narration in the Agile community. Actually, being happy and love each other is necessary to work together well, but it's not enough to have a successful product, okay? So this is a key point I want to clearly state in here. We need to go along together well to work together as knowledge workers, but that's not enough to have money and prosperity and the sustainability of our business, mm? okay? 
were recorded, yes. Cool. Now, uh, still, uh, Artum. Artum point is, is right. So non-ergodicity can be related not to the full failure, but can be related to the partial unsuccess. And we prefer, rather than a binary definition of ergodicity, we prefer a uh, um, gradient of ergodicity. Gradient, very Italian. So like gradient <laughs> version of, of ergodicity. Okay. Um, for example, one other reason to prefer uh, a blended version, a blended definition, uh, so like, we, I like it to call the weak ergodicity, the blended one that Artyom proposed us, is that actually, are there actually in real life processes that are, not er that are perfectly ergodic? This, this is a very powerful question because actually, you know what? Life is non ergodic. We all die in the end. Even if we have a perfectly successful software development process that will deliver every time 100% success, then in the end, someone else is going to collect the fruit of this hard job, hard work. Because actually, no, oh, that's fine, it's fine. I'm okay with that. I was impressed by the best frequencies. So, okay, you get the point? So, I mean, it's much, so Artyom and Mikhail provided us with arguments that I was ready to give you in this, in this uh, text by Delanna, which is formally ergodicity is a binary property, okay? In theory, this is a useful distinction between ergodic and non-ergodic, but actually, since all the processes in, in the end are non-ergodic, it's much better to consider how much ergodic is a process rather than whether it is ergodic or not, okay? So again, theoretical polarities are not useful. We cannot use them to improve our project management starting on Monday. This definition of ergodicity works much better. Okay, so far? Okay, because now we're going to the last activity of, of today, and then we are going to the, towards the end. Probably we will not use the whole time that we are allowed to stay here, unless we get a very powerful conversation, the last time we have to go lunch, lunch together and blah, blah, blah. But how can we make knowledge work, I mean, software development in this case, more ergodic? So now that we know that it's not, ergod not perfectly ergodic, almost non-ergodic, non and now that we know a few of the root causes, how can we improve the ergodicity of our software development process? How can we improve our software development process to be it, for it to be more ergodic? 10 minutes free discussion at each table with this kick in. <laughs> Actually, this could be a conversation that goes on for years, and it is a, a conversation that is going on since years. Um, we will see, uh, after, after this debriefing, I will show you two or three arguments that I want to be sure that are made today. But before I show you mine, I want to hear of yours. So what, are, what could we do to fix the situation? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So smaller teams and smaller time frame to improve the ergodicity of a software development project. That, by chance, ends up being one of the things that we have always fought for in the last 20 years, I mean. But now ergodicity provides us with a technical argument, which might be understood at least by the nerdiest of managers. So this is, I think this, this, this is a, uh, a good, so uh, we will talk about the size of the teams in a while, but that, that is a good point. So collaboration is making us less or more ergodic. This is an open question. Uh, we'll get back to this later on. Other argument, other uh, solutions?
So increasing quality rather than the 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 the, the speed of, of delivery. So okay. Okay, cool. So it's establishing a culture about this quality delivery rather than speed delivery. Because no one, no one, yeah, no one should feel the pressure to deliver in a, in a, a hustly. Okay. Creating, avoiding technical debt. Ah, yeah, because technical debt is the source of, a, of, of uh, ergodicity reduction. Okay, that's a very good point. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So buffers as a as a um, a way to defend yourself from the variance. Okay, but it's a but. I agree. But but in the lean doctrine, buffers, inventory, and stuff that stays there should be fought with all our strength. Have you ever heard about lean thinking? Have you ever heard about just-in-time production? Have you ever heard about backlogs not being good, especially the big backlogs? So it seems like it's more complicated than it can be told if you just go, OK. But still, you get a very fo focal point. Any consideration? Any consideration? Yeah, the die only return only returns four and five. I mean, this reduces the problem. Yeah, that, that's an amazing and thanks for getting back to the game because I would have done it. But yeah, so reducing variance is one of the so. But how do you reduce variance? This is another question that we're not going to fix today because actually that's a huge problem. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, first argument that I want to bring. Uh, the game proved that collaboration somehow brought reduction of ergodicity, right? Or, or, or ergodicity, okay? Because actually the dependencies were the problem. And, but is it true that collaboration makes us less ergodic? For example, let's, let's think about a hunters and gatherer group of proto-humans, okay? Is collaboration in that case, is collaboration reducing or increasing ergodicity? You, ha you, you basically, you hunt the, the prey every day or every week. Being in a group makes it less likely or more likely that you will have another week to go to hunt again. I want to hug you. <laughs> Thanks. So, it depends on the activity. The division of labor was invented in the manufacturing chain in a tailorist for this world in which division of labor was an amazing invention to increase the throughput and the quality of, of, the, work, of the overall system. 
but not all the jobs are easily divided. And knowledge work usually cannot be divided that good. This is the whole thing about software architecture, is all a discussion, a conversation about how do we split this huge ball of mud so that we can go on with a faster throughput and better quality. If I give Ken Follett half of the book and I give Stephen King the other half, the end result might be less than optimal, unless they talk each other, which could be an amazing bestseller, but that's another story. Okay? So that's exactly the point. It depends, the, the, the collaboration contribution for ergodicity depends on the context which I know it's a bad news for those who are looking for recipes, but there are no recipes, okay? Okay, and also uh, there is an amazing uh, talk that you can listen to uh, by Frederick Brook. Brook. Brook is the author of The Mythical Man Month. Have you ever heard about this book? It's a very well-known book in the Agile community. There is this amazing speech in which he I will give you the quote. Whoop. Um, so it's like adding more people to a highly divisible task, such as cleaning rooms in a hotel, decreases the overall task duration. However, other tasks, including many specialty in software projects, are less divisible. And Brooks points out that this limited divisibility with another example, while it takes one, moment, one woman nine months to make one baby, nine women can make a baby in one month. And also, there is another quote by him that I love to give you, I would love to give you here, which is, uh, let me hope, uh, let me check if I can find it. No, uh, sorry. No, I lost it. By the way, by the way, the, the main the main topic was that the fact that collaboration in itself is a good thing is far from being a universal truth. And this is another. Let me get closer to the camera. <laughs> I I really want to state it clearly because this is another common. Uh, it's a stereotype of the agile development about collaboration being a good thing in itself, like it was, like, like, like if it were the end, and not the means. But actually, we want collaboration as much as we, it makes our life better and our work easier, better, faster, simpler. Otherwise, if I can go alone, it's perfectly fine to go alone. We have to tweak collaboration according to our needs and our context. Collaboration in itself is no goal. Especially if we're talking about work, but actually, for, if, even, if, even if it were not about work, I mean, what, if, what about relax? Sometimes I want to relax alone, sometimes I want to be relaxed with friends and playing games. Going downhill with a mountain bike can be very relaxing in a sense. You do it alone, you do it with friends, and then you want to rest on your sofa for two days. Everything is fine, as long as you are owning your time and owning the collaboration patterns that you are living by, okay? So this is the main point. Collaboration and ergodicity, this, were, this, was, the, 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 this was the topic. Then, let's turn it on. Died. And now I know why. Yes. Then, second argument. Have you ever heard about risk aversion? It's a cognitive bias. Have you ever heard about cognitive biases overall? Okay, cool. Now, risk aversion is something that gets discussed in the behavioral economics like something bad, so people are more risk averse than they should be, and people are taking less risk than they should take to rationally improve the overall gain they, they get.
But what if some cognitive biases are a residual of ergodicity? It's a, tra it's a tentative of some behavioral rules to bring ergodicity back into the game. So I'm afraid to be risk averse because I know that if I do, I mean, I, I'm a glider pilot. I'm not afraid to fly. But I understand that if you fly once in a glider, it's perfectly fine. If you live your life trying to beat the world record for distance flight every week, it can be dangerous. And I do tons of dangerous sports, like ski, alpi, uh, ski touring, or, but the ergodicity of this activity accumulates, as Michael said. And this has to be taken into account, and our cognitive biases are wired to bring this accumulation effect into the game. And when someone studying psychologists, economists, or engineers, or project managers are studying the behavior of people, it makes no sense to remove that serial component of the problem to say, yeah, we should be more risk averse, or this doesn't apply, this is not rational, and blah, blah, blah. Some things that we call feelings are actually embedded rationality. Okay? And when it comes, I mean, we are all knowledge workers, okay? Knowledge worker is a definition, a general definition that I use for creative workers, but if I say creative work, workers, people think about artists, okay? Developers are creative workers. I, I mean, with knowledge workers, everyone who works on problems that can be fixed in many different ways according to the, the person that fixes it, okay? Cool. Knowledge workers use two things, glucose and time. Now, either we start talking about mm, how do you eat, which, which is a topic in itself, but we have to talk about how do we manage our time. And is, is it going to be a waste the next? For, have you ever heard about time boxing? Time boxing is a risk management technique to increase the ergodicity of your time management. Because you know what? Do you remember the metaphor about, not the metaphor, the, the problem about investing all in with just one investment, all your capital, right? Time has this nasty feature. You always invest it in full. There is no way to save time for something else later, because actually either you spend the time according to a given plan, or either you spend it according to another, maybe unintended plan. But time passes by, so knowledge workers have this problem. They are always in a non-ergodic scenario because they invest their time, hopefully in a good way. Do you get this point? I know this is, this, these are bad news, but awareness is the starting point for revolution, okay? Third argument, this is going to be the last one. How many minutes? Are okay, we still got time. So, should we be paranoid? I cannot, I, I cannot fly, I cannot go, uh, even a bicycle ride might be the end of our increase so, sorry, decrease our ergodicity, okay? Yeah, and that's true. But it's also true that my death at Russian roulette is non-ergodic for me. But <laughs> it is. It might be ergodic for the system. I mean, um, the... The so-called precautionary principle, being paranoid about any unexpected bad outcome, it should only be applied at the highest level. In terms of software development, we should care about the future of our company, of our customer, of our career, but we should shape our process to let any single user story blatantly fail with no problem. The ergodicity of one single user story shouldn't be the goal. Do you see the point? This is what we call anti-fragility. So basically, we want to make the single unit uh, sacrifice. We, we, we should 
we should allow for the sacrifice of the, of, of the single unit for the sake of the overall system. And engineers, I mean, I've been taught engineering at the university, and engineers insist a lot on steady state, okay? The, in Italian is condizioni a regime. So you got a trans, the transient phase and then things stabilize. This is a very common concept in physics or electronics, okay? Cool. And often engineers mention the steady state that you will get eventually as the rule. But my experience is that all life happens in the transient. And actually we're moving from one transient to another, to another, to another, to another, to another, and so on, for a whole life. And the only steady state is death. This is a problem that actually it's in the blind spot of engineering, and this, is, this has a very bad consequence. This is, this some, somehow engineering is considering reality as a casino, okay, in which you have defined rules and defined Gaussian probabilities, which is not true. For example, if you deliver, I mean, if you measure your, you are uh, applying Kanban, uh, pure Kanban flow, and you measure the throughput, okay? And then you can plan for the, for the future according to your past throughput or your most recent throughput. Do you, have you ever heard about this kind of management? It doesn't matter if you don't do it, but have you, have you ever heard about this? Nice. But in my experience, the problem in software development is that one failure on a single user story can hijack the relationship between provider and customers at the point to break up the whole project. And so there is no ergodicity. It doesn't make sense to plan like if it was sure that we will deliver with that throughput forever. All the failures I, I witnessed in my life as a software developer or as a software development entrepreneur were about a single failure in time ruining the whole project. And this is the subject I discuss in my, in, my, in my book, Extreme Contracts. I will give you a gift at the end, okay? Um, just, to, just to give you a feeling about this uh, ludic, we call it the ludic fallacy, okay? So the way we conceive the reality as a casino while it's not. 12 minutes, plenty of time. Um, I throw a coin 99 times, and I always get head. It's a head or tails, okay? Tail. Now, 99 times head. What are the chances to get head at, at the 100th throw? 50%. That's what we get taught. And I agree in theory. And in many parts of Italy, actually someone thinks that uh, tail will be most probable. It's like delayed numbers, something like that, like in the Lotto, which is a popular bingo-like game in Italy. Okay, but a nerd like me would, would, would answer A, but coins don't have memory, so the, the chances to get head at the 100th throw, toss will, be, will still be 50-50, okay? Now, from a pragmatic point of view, do you remember practice, theory, and blah, 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 if you come to me with a coin that gets 99 times head, that coin must be discussed. And the chances to get head another time when we throw it for the 100th time are higher than getting tail. And this pragmatical view of reality is out of the scope in software project management. This is the last thing that you have to remember about this workshop. We, we play, always play with ludic fallacy. We are always assuming that the mathematical model of reality will be more real than reality, which is absolutely dumb. 
And this happens because we lack skin in the game, okay? Because, no, she's not the right example. Uh, <laughs> if, you are, if, you have, <laughs> if you have your skin in the game, then risk aversion biases kicks in, so biases kick in, and you become more aware of what, I mean, if I ask you, build a bridge for us, and then you live under the bridge with your family, you're gonna start adding buffers, like, let's add a little bit of rock. Let's add a little bit of concrete. Let's make it thicker. And the point is that, to me, the problem, the root cause of all these scenarios is that in software development projects, we don't have enough skin in the game, put in the game, by all the stakeholders. And so there is someone that will not live by the consequence of the failure asking to use a process that will be lived in its failure by someone else. And this is a problem that gets set in the contracts as a starting point. Contracts are, I mean, what, what kind of contracts do you know? Fixed price? and time and materials, right? Fixed price basically is saying, hey, you developer, make an estimate. I will give you a fixed amount of money, if, and if you're wrong, and you, un, you, un, you learn by the game that we played at the beginning that we can only be wrong towards the worse, not towards the better, if you will be wrong, you will pay for the consequence. It's not, my, my skin will not be in the game because I will give you the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. Time and material is the other way around. So basically, you are the developer and say, hey, I assumed it will take five days. It, if it takes what, uh, 10 in the end, your problem, you're going to pay twice as much. You see, this sets the foundation for a non-ergodic game. You will find this afternoon a free chapter of the book for you, the... Um, the coupon will be like Craft 2023, okay? I decided just now. And you find me on my website and on every social network, starting from MySpace up to TikTok, okay? Please feel free to get to me for uh, beers, drinks, coffee in Italy or whatever, but also to ask questions about what we discussed today. Also give me, if you want, negative feedback, like, hey, it sucked, but tell me why. And whatever, I'm, I will be here the whole day. Thanks a lot, it's been a pleasure, and have a good day. Ciao.